Hi, welcome to session on microservices and Redis, a love story. I am Raghav. I am a member of Amazon Elastic Cash team. I am also an active contributor of AWS controllers for Kubernetes, which is also referred as ACK. What are microservices? Microservices are an architectural and organizational approach to software development, where software is composed of small, independent services that communicate over well-defined APIs. These services are owned by small, self-contained teams. Microservices architecture make applications easier to scale and faster to develop, enabling innovation and accelerating time to market for new features. Let's discuss few concepts about microservices. Microservices architecture include domain-driven design, which results in cohesive microservices that implement domain-specific functionality. These microservices have ownership around domain-specific data and provide data isolation. Due to data isolation, data of a particular microservice cannot be accessed directly by another microservice. This enables a microservice to use appropriate data store depending upon their business needs. Multiple microservices are developed to realize a business use case. These microservices engage in distributed processing to help with the business use case. During this time, microservices have a need to communicate with each other. Event-driven communication is one of the ways of doing it. With the domain-driven design, data isolation, we want to ensure microservices are loosely coupled. Loose coupling helps microservice to grow independently while involved in distributed processing. Microservices often use cache, database, streams to help with the data processing. Redis helps to implement microservice architecture. Depending upon your business use case, Redis can be used for data for faster data access and event-driven communication. Additionally, Redis supports high availability and horizontal scaling. These are very beneficial when you need to scale microservices. Depending upon the type of data that a microservice handles, it can use appropriate data structure within Redis. Redis as a cache is a common pattern in microservices architecture. Redis is used as a caching layer in between application and RDBMS. Microservice will make most read requests to Redis and query RDBMS only if there is a cache miss. This helps to reduce the latency to access the information since Redis has sub-millisecond latency. Another benefit of this approach is that it will reduce the number of read calls to RDBMS. Since this reduces the load on RDBMS, this allows RDBMS to support more writes. Different microservices are developed to handle specific business use case. These microservices do not have access to each other's data directly. Interactions between two microservices can be synchronous or asynchronous. Redis PubSub supports the real-time communication. One microservice can produce an event and all subscribing microservices can get notified and act on it accordingly. Redis Streams is a data structure that allows microservices to communicate asynchronously. A microservice can add a message to stream, which can be processed by consumer microservices at their own convenience. This enables to create loosely coupled microservices, which can be independently deployed. Choice of using PubSub versus Streams depends upon business use case. Streams provide at least once guarantee, whereas PubSub provides at most once. Redis supports multiple data structures like strings, list, set, sorted sets, hashes, bitmaps, bitfields, hyperlogs, geospatial indexes, and streams. Depending upon the use case, a microservice can use appropriate data structure. For building a leaderboard microservice, a microservice designer can use a Redis sorted set. For implementing a service to do drive time calculations, one can use Redis geospatial data structure. 
Different data structure allows a microservice to handle different types of data very efficiently within a single node or cluster. Redis as a data store helps to build highly available and scalable microservices. Redis supports failing over to a replica to ensure there is a high availability. Often, horizontal scaling of databases is very hard. This limits how much a microservice can scale. However, Redis supports partitioning data into various shards. This enables horizontal scaling. Let's talk about containerized microservices. Container images allow for modularity in service. They are constructed by building functionality onto a base image. Developers, operations team, and IT leaders should agree on base image that have security and tooling profile that they want. Dependencies are self-contained within a container and are not shared with other services. Containers are immutable. This is leveraged and satisfied by containers that are easily pulled from a repository and discarded when they are stopped. Application development is faster since small teams have specific development responsibilities. Loose coupling allows the teams to independently deploy the code. This would result in frequent deployments. Since containerized services are subjected to frequent deployment, you will need to introduce a coordination layer that tracks which containers are running on which host. Eventually, you will want a system that provides the state of containers, the resources available in a cluster, etc. This problem can be solved by using a container orchestration system. Container orchestration systems like Kubernetes are very popular. They allow you to define applications by assembling a set of containers that work together. Kubernetes also help the containerized microservices with declarative application management, automatic drift detection and remediation, scalability, and service discovery, to name a few advantages. As an alternative to running Redis yourself, you can use a managed offering like Amazon Elastic Cache. Elastic Cache helps you with monitoring, snapshotting, online scaling, and provides a lot of other advantages. Traditionally, Kubernetes users had to rely on AWS console, CLI, CloudFormation for provisioning Elastic Cache cluster. We thought there could be a better way for Kubernetes users. Introducing AWS controllers for Kubernetes Elastic Cache controllers. Resources for Elastic Cache are just another Kubernetes manifest. Kubernetes manifest is a specification of Kubernetes API object in JSON or YAML format. It specifies the desired state of an object that Kubernetes will maintain when you apply the manifest. With ACK, Elastic Cache life cycles for create, update, and delete can be managed within Kubernetes. With ACK, one can have native Kubernetes experience while creating the Elastic Cache resources. You can see in this slide, there is an example of how to create an Elastic Cache cluster. So to create an Elastic Cache cluster, one need to define a manifest, Kubernetes manifest, which includes the details like replication group ID, the shards that are needed, the replicas that are needed. So once this YAML file is defined, a Kubernetes user can apply it using kubectl or any Kubernetes client. All the cluster management operations are supported. That is, scale up and down, scale in and out, and increase or decrease replicas. For example, if you want to scale up from cache m5 large, in this example, to cache m6gx large, just update the manifest and call kubectl apply. We have added supports for Kubernetes secrets in ACK. You can specify confidential information like auth token, passwords, in secrets, and refer to them in manifest while creating Elastic Cache cluster. This ensures that there are no hard-coded credential information in any YAMLs or JSON. In this example, you can see that for the auth token, we have referred to a secret called secret name in default namespace and the key of the secret is called as auth. ACK, with ACK, Kubernetes users can create other Elastic Cache resources, such as snapshots, parameter groups, and subnets. 
Here in the slide, you can see an example of how to create a snapshot using ACK. A Kubernetes user would need to just specify snapshot name and Elastic Cache cluster ID and then use kubectl apply to create a new snapshot. We are currently working on adding supports for Redis, Elastic Cache users and user groups. This supports Redis ACL functionality. ACK Elastic Cache Controller is open source and is in active development. Elastic Cache Controller is currently in developer preview. There are many other AWS services which are in active development. To name some of them are SNS, S3, and RDS. So let's look at the key learnings and takeaway from this session. Redis is a great choice for microservices architecture. Containers and Kubernetes simplify managing large number of microservices. Amazon Elastic Cache for Redis makes it easier to manage Redis for microservices. AWS controllers for Kubernetes helps provision Elastic Cache clusters with native Kubernetes experience. Thank you for joining us for this session. I have links related to ACK Elastic Cache controller in the last slide. Please do download the slides and check out those links. Thank you.